Hello, hello, hello. Everybody, can you hear me? If you can hear me, I want to see any emoji um, to let me know you are there. So I'm going to do a quick demo, all right? And my son Joshua is going to be taking the questions. You can you can put in your questions and let's go. The picture I'm going to use, I'm going to flip it. I've already posted it on my Instagram. That is the picture. This guy has the best suya in Lagos. I'm only joking, but guy, this guy sells suya. And those of you that don't know what suya is, suya is the most beautiful roasted meat ever. Okay, so that's the guy. So the reason why I posted the picture is so that you might want to have that as a reference because I'm going to be zooming in. I'm going to be zooming in into just the pic, um, just where I'm going to be working from and not the picture at the same time. I hope that's okay. If that's okay, I'm going to crack on. You're set? You're ready? Okay. Someone sent, uh, 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 anybody send a message? Just let me know, Josh. Let's crack on. Okay. So today I'm using a 6B pencil and I'm, the surface I'm doing this sketch on is a museum mount board. I got it from my framers. I don't normally sketch on this, but for this sort of demo, I find it very useful because it can take a battery. Look at that. It's as hard as wood. So let's go. Okay, let's begin. Yes, let's go. So here we go. The first thing I'm going to be thinking about when I want to draw this guy um, I think it will be good actually if you see both I'm just going to push this back a bit Because I'm going to be referencing both Yeah, just just about there would do I think Okay Is I want to get the shape of his head Alright And what I notice about the shape of his head Is it's I can see that as a whole That's just like an egg I hope this is clear enough Because you know all right, and he's got this lovely hat on, and that hat, I think it's just you know, I would say there's an ang so it has an angle here, and an angle that goes straight, and an angle that bends, and one that comes down. That's all I see for now. That's all I see for now. I don't want to overstate anything. I don't want to overdo anything. This is the beginning. First things first. And then I'm going to start using angles to plot this together. So we've got the shape, a nice shape. Remember, it's just a sketch. These are just my tasters um, that I'm doing. The key thing here is just to see how I go about this. In a very kind of, um, I'm going to slow it down, but you know, I would have been doing this really fast. But this is how I go about it. This line goes straight down from here. And then I'm just going to block in where I think things are going to be. So you can see I've just separated everything at the very start. Nothing serious at the moment. Remember, I am sketching with a Jumbo. It is a, a Jumbo um, Faber Castell 6B. Jumbo Faber Castell 6B. And I'm doing this on a museum mount board. It's pa It's not paper. It's like a board. It's... It's, it's really strong. It's used to mount um, watercolors and stuff like that. So going straight into the real business now. Now that I've approximated where his head is going to be, I'm going to start using angles to break it down. Like there, that's an angle. Here, that's an angle. Um, here, that's an angle. And here, that is an angle. And right here, it goes down from the hat and there's one that unites. So in some way, I've got the shape of his face with angles. I'm going to briefly, just briefly, just put um, something to show what he's wearing um, like that. 
Okay, the next thing is the axis. It's so important about getting the axis. That's the middle of the face. So important. And then I need to be able to tell where his eyes might be. So I'm just going to put an approximate place where I think his eyes might be. And then an approximate place where I think his nose might be. And an approximate place where I think his mouth might be. All right. These are just like landmark things that I think will come in handy. After I've done this, I am going to be thinking about the features and structure. But for me, structure always comes first before features. Look at this structure here. I call this the side of his face. It goes down. It comes in. There's a nice cheekbone there lovely cheekbone it goes in and it comes out this guy has an amazing face i like faces that have a lot of interest so you can see where i've caught the structure from right from his forehead the curve there a lovely curve it goes straight in and it comes out i've loved that sort of structure to things i'm gonna come again on this side look at that a little bit of structure here that's the side of his face it comes there near his bro this one actually has a kind of circle around the eye area there look at that circle and then another kind of ellipse around here i just like to drop these in but it it just continues so in a way we're getting kind of like a three-dimensional structure look at i'm going to do this here it's almost like there's this side and there's this side and you know he's dead on in the middle now let's start to get some more structures in so his eye area i'm just gonna shade all that dark at the moment just the whole eye area i'm not gonna think of it as eyes just the whole eye area what i mean by that is his eyes and eyebrow and everything like that i'm just going to put everything in one whole shot dark i'm not going to make any features come out of that i'm going to do the same thing with his nose just a whole shape that looks like um his nose i'm just going to feed put that in remember this is a sketch i'm not actually giving it much interest on the drawing side just a sketch so that you can understand how i go into that again another shade i'm going to put in is all this kind of lovely bit here just a kind of shade i'm using the side of the pencil and over here as a bit of a shade in i've just done this very very briefly fast because i will be working this way fast if i was doing this live this is the quick way I'm going to get the, the, the overall um, shapes in. And then I'm going to get his mouth. So somewhere here, I'll put the top lip and bottom lip. And underneath, I'm going to, you know, just find the middle of his mouth. Just somewhere there, just the middle. I'm not going for anything particular at the moment. And now I'm underneath his um, bottom lip. Just underneath his bottom lip. There's a nice shade there. And if you notice, there's a gap in between and underneath, there's another shade before his white beard. OK, so these are the beginnings, the just the brief beginnings. Now, a little bit more to the structure of his face is that in this middle part here, you can almost feel like a circle. And there are lovely lines, the lovely lines that show the age, you know just i'm just gonna put them you know this is a sketch i'm i'm not it's not like a commission it's just the way i go about that now let's put in the ears so somewhere around here i'm going to make sure i get his eyes in so just watch what i do here just in a brief way i'm going to just open up the first bit of eye that i think will come in that's that one and then another one over here remember you can ask questions okay my son is taking the questions so if you have questions while i'm doing this just let me know um so i've just put in the briefest amount of information on his eyes all right and then once i've put that in i'm gonna block in with the side of my pencil just very briefly his eyebrows you can see 
and I'm using the side of this 6B Jumbo Faber Castell, making sure that I'm just doing this in the freest way possible. That's how it is for now. Now that I've put his eyes in, it can make me know where I'm going to put his air in because now I know the level that his airs can be on. So I'm just going to fix that in. I think it will just be here. And another bit, a lovely, this air is even more interesting. I think when I rule a line across, it ends around where his mouth is going to start. And that's just his air around there. So, so far, we're just taking our time to block in this guy. I'm going to now put some shade underneath his eyes because that's another sort of feature in his face that is so strong. You can see that feature in his face, so strong. Um, those are his landmark facial bits. Um, remember, you can ask questions as I go along. And now I'm just going to start shading the, 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 the little curves, like all the folds between his eye area, because he's got a lot of those. Everything here is done very loosely at the moment. And I'm following on for a little bit of shade on this side and a little bit of shade like a triangle on this side. Everything is done lightly with um, the, the, the side of the pencil, just the side of the pencil at the moment. No more, no less. Just taking my time. This lovely guy that sells Suya in Lagos. Again, Suya, for those of you who don't know, some of the most amazing roasted meat. Um, I know you vegans don't like to hear that, but yeah, I love meat. Whoa. Okay, let's go on. So that's the brief level around the eyes. Now let's get to the nose. Calico and Canvas is asking okay. what pencil are you using again? Yes, yeah, so the pencil I'm using is a Jumbo Faber Castell 9000. It's a 6B. A 6B. Thank you. And I'm doing this on a museum mount board. It's a white surface. It's like the things we use to mount watercolor. The back of it. Okay, so now I'm going into the nose. You can see like there's three circles. One here, one middle one, and one by the side. You know, I just have to put that in because it has a particular shape. And now I'm going to just shade it. I'm just going to shade it. You see, just going to shade it. I shade it because, you know, it has this, it almost looks like a car. And I'm just shading that in with no particular detail at the moment. Everything is just done briefly. Now let's go into the, um, the, the, the sides, these lovely side bits. That's where the real character comes. Sabora is asking, did you gesso the board first? Pardon? No, the board hasn't been gessoed. It's like a mount board, just an ordinary mount board that we use for watercolor. No gesso on it. And I'm working with pencil straight away. Any questions, just throw them in. My son is helping me for the questions while I work on this. So at the moment, I'm just working through the sides. The sides, you can see how I'm trying to get in the sides of um, his face where that joins in just the sides um, the brief sides just the sides just really working that through um, there's a nice kind of he has this I, I think it's a kind of smile not exactly a, a definite smile but I'm just going to cut in his mouth to, to prove that now there's a little bit of a moustache I'm just going to put that in with some bare strokes and but by the side of his mouth here that goes in. I think his mouth is not a straight line. It's not a straight line. I'm going to zoom in to see it very clearly. It's not a straight line. So that's so important when you're sketching because you want to get people's mood. It's, there's a little bit of a curve. It goes in. There's a dip and then it comes out again. It's kind of like interesting to see. And then the top lip Calico and is there. Is asking, would you ever use an eraser at this stage? Um, not yet. Um, the reason why I wouldn't want to use any razor at this stage is because it's just a sketch. That is my cop out, you know. So if this even goes wrong, I wouldn't worry because anyone that um, wants to freak out or even myself, I'll say, look, it's just a sketch. 
And that's why I like to do sketching because it takes away the pressure. So everything I'm doing now is just like almost like I'm working with um, washes at the beginning of a painting. Yeah. So no erasers at the moment just because nothing is really in the detail zone. I'm just working on all I can see around this guy and... Um, you know, so no pressure and no erasing, just working my way through. Um, it might all go wrong. It might all go right. But at the end of the day, it's just a sketch. So here we go. We're keeping it going. We're keeping it alive. We're keeping it going. Now I've got to the bottom part of his face and there's a line. And on this side, I'm going to try and work this side properly now. So from where I'm going to start from the top bring that down and i think the line here is a little bit more straight okay and then it curves in a bit more fuller a fuller way a bit more full full like, like there's more of a curve like i've broken the angle down now there's a little bit of a curve so let's go and i'm just gonna fill this all up with with the side of the pencil just the side of the pencil remember I'm using a 6b so it's quite dark okay um, again, um, shading in the features as I go along. And now I'm going to go on this side. I really want to get this side where the cheekbone is. That's a real feature of his. So you can see me walking, working on the jaw area. There's parts that go in and come out. And again, I'm working on the robustness of this and how it connects and how it just goes in from this side. And very quickly, I'm going to shade the middle part of his face. Again, with the side of the pencil. I'm just going to run that all the way through. Just run it all the way through at the moment. Calicon Camps is asking, how do you sharpen your pencils? So, I sharpen my pencils. Because if you look at how this pencil is... Oh, God, let me put this in the camera. If you look at how this pencil is, you definitely know I didn't use a sharpener. I have used a, a cutter and I'm going to just bring that into um, um, the, the, the camera now. This, any of these kind of, whoops, I think I had one near, hold on. It's going to get a cutter. So this is how I sharpen them. All right. So here we go. I hope you can see this. So I'll be doing this. All right. And when I sharpen it like this, okay. When I sharpen it like this, I get a nice tapered view. And then I have this lovely sandpaper, smooth one, to just really glide it on. Once it's good enough, I'm ready to go. So I hope that helped. Um, again, I'm moving on. And I'm, again, from where I was, I said I was just going to run the shade through like that like that like that like that and i'm going to run the shade through all the way to the bottom just like that just like that just run this all the way to the bottom i just want to fill up that whole area that looks like a semicircle for the top he's wearing because it's a lovely top um it, it, from yoruba we call it a a, a, a buba not no 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 it's um it's a i can't remember exactly what's called it's the woman's one that's called a booba uh i can't actually remember what it's called but it's a nice it's like a kaftan it's a long a long um material um no a long uh thing that they wear and it's it, it's 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 um mostly the muslims um that wear it and it's it's quite nice so that's what i'm putting in there just very quickly just had to do that so everything and i've just shaded everything i'm doing is really dark because of the 6b i'm just going to shade this middle part a little bit darker to shade it a little bit darker in the middle i'm using the, the the broad side of the pencil just to shade that okay now let's get more into um a little bit more of the particularization of this guy and i'm going to start with his nose so what i'm oh oh before that let's finish off some shades in the air i just want to get most of the basic shades in just shades where they need to be just the shades in the right place remember you can ask any questions 
about this demo as I go along. My son will be taking those questions. Okay, so this is so far how we've gone. Um, now I am going to go some getting close to a little bit of you know being particular with things because I haven't so far. So I'm going to give this some heavy lines because everything's kind of vague. So I'm going to go into some heavy lines now. So just watch. Here is a heavy line because there's a connection. So there's a heavy line here. There is a heavy line over here. So I'm going to put this one in a bit darker. These lines that I'm calling heavy lines, they just mean that these are lines that carry weight. Under the eyebrow here, there's going to be a heavy line. I just like to do these in the most sketchy way. So, um, but again, and under his eye, okay, by the side, you're going to see where the aging happens. There's a heavy line. You can see that I'm going into this with some heavy lines now. In between, there are heavy lines. Remember, you can ask questions. Just let me know. I'm going on. I try to explain everything. So maybe that's why there's not a lot of questions. But everything I'm doing, I'm talking as I'm doing it. So heavy lines. All the heavy lines I'm thinking of that I can see. That's what I'm working on now. Heavy lines. Um, under here, there's a heavy line. Actually, inside his eye, there'll be a heavy shade because of his eyes are quite small. It's quite dark in there, but I just thought I should darken it. And in here, I would darken that. Remember, it's just a sketch. No pressure on anybody or anything. Now, I'm coming in with the side of my pencil. You can see how I'm holding the pencil. Heavy lines under his eye. Um, around his nose and around his nose there. By the side of his nose, there's a heavy line. I'm putting that in. And by the side of his nose here, there's a heavy line. So you can see how I'm getting into it. Now let's get into his nose proper. The shape of it kind of goes at, at an angle here and at an angle here. So I'm looking for his nostrils now and I'm just going to place one, a very dark shade in here. And a very kind of like a dark shade in here and where it comes together. Just getting that. So carefully and slowly, I'm just working my way through this. No erasers or anything yet. Remember, it's a sketch. There's no pressure. These are things you can just do to warm up and get yourself flowing. No pressure. No need of erasing and all that at the moment. Now, let's go with the side of him here, that side area. You know, I'm shading that again. And I'm gonna to come to this one, the side area, but heavy lines, don't forget, I almost got um, carried away there, heavy lines. Heavy lines over here, and a heavy line moves from here to the side here. A heavy line in his ear over here, and a heavy line inside. We're getting to all heavy lines now. Underneath here, this part, um, all heavy lines under his ear, that one vanishes. Heavy lines around his mouth, very important, around the mouth, how it curves in, how it goes. A heavy line to the corner here, very important. A heavy line by the side of his mouth on this side very heavy line you know just put that through and at the bottom of his lip there's a space but um, not actually a heavy line but where the line finishes you can see a little bit more uh, interest coming in at the bottom there's actually his beard over here so I'm just gonna put a heavy line just before that white beard starts and I'm gonna just underneath shade it again dark with the broad side of my pencil you can see how i'm going into this very lightly not putting any um pressure on myself there's a lot of things that are still going to happen so stay tuned and you know kind of keep following on if you have any questions let me know it's very sketchy so there is it's not like looking very refined and neat i like the 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 piece to have this lovely feel of 
sketchiness to it all right so here the hat i'm just refining some of the the edges and working as i go along remember you can ask questions as i do this um uh, um like brief kind of demo as i'm working through just showing you i'm only using one pencil all the way through now would you recommend using a black and white photo when drawing yes i would recommend a black and white photo while drawing because you can get the tones better but because i've trained myself to see tones because i sketch people every day i kind of am able to get the tones just by using a colored picture but it's very advisable to do that the only disadvantage of training yourself with a black and white picture is that that's not how reality is. So you need to keep trying your best, sketching from life to make sure you master how to use um, uh, real colored pictures and still get the tones right. I hope that helps. Again, I'm just focusing on his jaw. And coming out there are things that make him look like him the mouth very important that's why I'm spending time on the corner of his mouth actually the corner of everyone's mouth has a lot to do with their mood and resemblance that's definite you know so here we go so I'm um, still on this guy this lovely guy now I'm gonna go now what's gonna happen now is that now that I've got everything in a rough sense I'm going to start getting into some strokes. This is so important. These strokes are my, I love these strokes. Learned them all the way through from people, um, like people. I learned these from like Rembrandt. I, w I would look at his drawings. Um, there's another guy that I love so much. His name has just eluded me. But when you see me do this, it's going to make sense okay so here we go these strokes are hatches but they kind of bring out the form so i'm going to go in different ways to bring this out now it just makes it more sketchy and more alive the middle part i'm moving in a, a wavy way now just to bring out the form this area i'm moving in a, a curvy way to bring out the form then there's a line then there's more hatching. You can see me using the hatching in the way that um, the form moves. Now I've got to the hatching and there's more hatching, more hatching in the middle, more hatching. Then the hatching kind of fades off a bit, but I'm still using the hatching to keep going. When I'm, I'm now his eyebrows now, and I like how they go in and out and how, and I'm moving the pencil with curve hatchings just curve hatchings to the corner here so i'm following this thing through with hatching just curved most of it is curved if the form is curved now i'm going to go right into his eye um, nose area and there's hatchings right here and there's hatchings along his nose there and there's hatchings around his nose so i'm just going straight into the movement, these are kind of what brings the drawing to life. Hatching, hatching. Um, some of them can be like this. I'm going to do it broadly. This is what I'm doing. Some of it can be like this. Some of it can be like this. And some of them might intersect. It's to bring out the form. And now I'm on this side. I'm going to keep going. Underneath that eye, there are hatchings. Look at that triangular shape there. I'm moving in the direction of that triangular shape. And as I can read the form, I'm bringing it out. I'm going to come to this side now and bring out a little bit more hatching. And from the side, hatching, I'm following the form. So everything I do, I'm following the form now. It's almost like this is like using a spatula um, in, in sculpture. Now that I've got the main bulk of it, I'm using this to... To, to almost carve, carve into his structure and really get it out, get the forms out just by carving with the tip of my pencil. And that's all I'm doing for now, like really getting into this. Uh, I can go in any direction, but as far as I follow the form, 
you know that's the most important thing at the moment just following the form all the way through even where his nose bends in here there's some more hatching around here well, someone said that your glasses are in front of the screen so they're struggling to see my glasses yeah oh what do they mean by that Basically, um, your glasses are like covering the camera, so if you move like slightly to Oh, the... like this side? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So, again, sorry about that, but that's why my son's here to help me. I didn't know. All right, so more of the hatching. You can see as I'm going, taking it down. Here, it goes in. And there's more movement. Look at the movement there. Bringing that in. Strong. There's some real curving coming out from the bottom uh, of his beard. Look at how it goes right. And I'm following the movement, following the movement, how his mouth all just gels straight into the beard. Again, movement all the way, movement. So keep this in mind as you go along. I'm going to move again, again, again. Hatching all the way. That's all I'm working on now is the hatching. Hatching. Remember, you can ask any questions, but all I'm doing now, following the form, going through the motions, everything that makes it look. I'm here now. I'm curving it again, curving it to the movement, to the flow of him, to the movement. I can see if his neck curves, I'm going to make sure the stroke curves. Like this area, I'm just moving it all the way through. Just keep it going. Simple. Make, simplicity is the key here. Again, and it's just a sketch. Remember, this is not like a, a refined portrait. This is just a sketch. And then I'm going with like broad, broad um, strokes just all the way through now. Just going to do that because I'm going to take out highlights. But because this guy is fairly dark, I'm just going to go over his whole face in a sketch. With, with, all I'm doing here is just broad hatch um, strokes, but they're, they're more together. These ones are different from the hatching. These ones are broader. They're more together and they feel a little bit more um, um, united, I, I think, all together. I'm going straight now into... Um, what I'm going to use with the stump, I'm going to try and give it a background so that it kind of has some uh, feeling to it. So watch how I go about this. I'm just I'm using the broad stroke in a strong way now. So this is my signature style, the broad stroke. I let I learned this from Ted Kosky. Um, so it's the when you use the side of the pencil on smooth paper, it's just like you're painting with black and white. It is such an amazing feature. Don't press too hard or your pencil will snap. So here we go. Gonna keep that going. Just the briefest of sketches, you understand me? This is what I call them, just the briefest of the way, you know, to sketch something and, and make it look lively. That's the key thing here, making it look lively. So you can see that I'm taking everything. Who was the man you just mentioned? Um, that I learned, um, Ted Kosky. Um, T E um, T E D and Kosky is K A U S K S Y. I hope I got the spelling right. He's passed away. He wrote a book called Broad Strokes, Broad Strokes, Pencil Broad Strokes, Revolutionary. I learned about him from my lecturer in Yaba College of Technology, Olu Amoda. He was a great sculptor. And he got us doing this technique of broad strokes and it literally changed my understanding of drawing. Now I'm going to use the stump. The stump to soften. The, uh, the, this is not showing. Okay, I'm using a stump now to soften the background. You're going to watch me soften the background now just to add a little bit of 
a painterly feel to this. So here we go. I'm just going to soften the background. I, I, might, I might even take it into the drawing itself, into what he's wearing. So it almost looks like a painting. So you can see me coming into the into what he's wearing now. Because always, because I'm a sketcher, a natural sketcher, I kind of always think that I'm sketching, even when I'm painting. So even when I'm doing this, I'm actually thinking that I'm painting or sketching at the same time. So I'm always in that mode of, you know, can I just transform this? So if so, now that I'm sketching, I I kind of feel that I'm I'm using paint but still sketching. So I I don't want this to feel like at the same time it's a drawing, but I don't want it to just remain a drawing. I want it to have this life to it. So over the years, I want things to have this inherent life. There's a little bit of a tone here. If you see where the shade, the, it changes, the tone, the, the, the surface changes, yeah. But the rest of the background, I want it to be soft. Remember, you can ask any questions as we go along. And I hope you're seeing the progress as we've started from the very beginning to where we are now. Um, I think we've spent about um, like uh, 38 minutes and, you know... There's still lots to do, way, 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 way more to go. But, you know, I'm just um, using these as a taster to show you. Some of you, you might be hesitant, thinking, should I join the Addictive Sketchers movement? Boy, you're going to get first-hand knowledge of these kind of demos, all explained, how I go about them and how it works. So what an opportunity um if you want to and take it to the highest level this is your opportunity now i'm using the stump on some certain places in the work so you're going to see where i'm softening his eyes um the area here i won't soften everything because i don't want it to lose the, vi the the vitality just in some places just some places where i think the form is softer and I just need to really carve it in and, you know, show some, you know, interest. So I'm not going to soften everything because that kills it, you know. But just in some places, you're going to see me soften it now. Yeah. And now, just take my time. Soften on this side. Soften here. And I'm going to stop the softening because sometimes I overdo it and it kills the beauty of the harsh strokes which I want to maintain because he's a bloke but I'm going to soften the bottom though because there's no form in his neck it is just all dark so I can soften that and get away with that just it, it, it would be nice to just soften that and get away with that now I'm going to carefully carefully start using an eraser this is where I take out the highlights. So important because this will bring it to kind of like to life. Um, a lot of the places where I might have missed somewhere, um, left somewhere out, I can now use an eraser um, to take out the highlights. So let's go. Let's start. Um, just before that, I'm going to run. I'm just going to run a pencil through the tones where things are a little bit lighter than they are in the drawing i'm just gonna like put the just darken some areas before i start taking out the highlights so when i do take out the highlights it definitely works so i'm just darkening all around some of the areas of this guy and so that when i take out the highlights it's going to be clearer where the highlights are and what's actually happening so you can see me running my pencil right through it just to make sure that nothing stands out which is not supposed to before I continue and then um, I can go for the kill. Yes. So let's... I can't wait to go for the kill now. Um, it's, remember, this is just a sketch. Um, the key is not to like get a portrait resemblance thing done. This is about how will I approach this and how how will it like feel? How will it start to to look you know okay so here we go 
I'm using a, a mono zero, a mono zero. I'm going to put this a mono zero. This is what I'm using at the moment, a mono zero to take out the highlight. It's a retractable eraser, a retractable eraser. So let's go. The first place I want to really take out a highlight is this part here. A lovely chunk of light hitting this guy over here. Wow. Look at that. It just, and all that area, all that area, just taking that whole highlight out and to the side, you know, this kind of like really brings it to life. All this area. Remember where I said I love what the light was doing to his um, cheekbone? That's around there. So um, I'm going to take that out. Uh, around his eye over here. I hope you're all following. Let's just make sure that it's there. Yep. Just around here, there's a lovely highlight. Look at that one. Just around. Let me just soften this area first so that it really shows when I bring out the highlight. Just somewhere here. And right through. And all this area from the side of his eye kind of feels light and i'm gonna do it in a strokey way so it feels part of the draw um the, the hatching i was doing before just a little bit on that side let's now get into the middle of his um like on just the uh, above his eye there's a little bit of highlights there it's not that bright but it's there do you ever seal your sketches yes i seal them with fixative um because this is graphite if I don't, I'll cover it with tracing paper so that it preserves it till when it's ready to be framed. But if they're in sketchbooks, I don't really worry because they're sketchbook pieces. But this one isn't a sketchbook piece, so that's why I'll need to, put, um, to preserve it. Again, highlights on the nose. Uh, a line here you can see how he's particular i'm looking for those highlights that really show his features and trying to get them exactly as they are as possible remember it's just a sketch no pressure on all that resemblance thing and all okay let's go for the side here let's go for in in inside I'm just watching, looking for the right places to take out the highlights. Again, here, that's a very nice, strong area. Okay, and um, underneath here, I think the mono, really need to get a chunk of it out. All right, and then his lovely beard under here, need to get a lot of that out. <laughs> Because it's really white or grey, should I say. Yeah. More on this. Um, over here, there's some lovely bits of highlight. And the side here. Just looking for the right places. Soften that a bit. Let's take that in. Let's take this a little bit in. I think it's a little bit in here. Okay, and his ears are not that accurate, so I'm just taking my time, looking in and around. Okay, there's a highlight on his ear. Let's go for that. All right, by the side, don't forget that. In Calicum here. Calicum Canvas says, thank you for answering all these questions. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, these things, uh, they take a lot of time. So thank you for, 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 for actually joining in. Uh, yeah, so we're continuing just, I'm almost getting to the end. But, you know, I, I would let you know when I think I've gone uh, far enough with the sketch. Um here we go in inside here we've got a lot of interest in there 
A lot of things happening around. It's just interesting. It's a lovely face to draw because there's so much going on. That's the thing about stuff like this is when you have a good face, an interesting face, oh, you see so much. All right. Uh, let's watch this highlight here. Good one there. And then a highlight on, I think I'm going to use another eraser. Uh, this one is a bit of a strong one, so it can take out a little bit more highlights. I've cut an eraser here. You can see this one, just an eraser. This one might help me get a little bit more out from the sides. There you go. You can see all that here, within here. And I'm going to brighten the middle part here and over here. Let's, I'm very careful not to use my hands because my hands are dirty at the moment. So I'm just going to use a cloth to buff off that area. And almost, I'm almost coming to the end of this sketch, but let's see. And I'll post it so you can see. So those of you that want to use it as a reference or just to see it more closely, because not everything is visible on the, on the, on the live. You can see it in more detail. And I'm going to soften the, those ones again, just so that it doesn't gain too much prominence. Just soften it. Soften it. And then bring it in into some of the areas, you know, just bring it in, working it in and working it in. I'm just playing around now with the with what he's wearing. I don't I want it to look different from his face. I want it to have a different texture to his face. So that's why I'm playing around with this just with the stump very nice um thing. Um and just kind of blending his forehead in there. Don't want to blend everything, but let's get a little bit of blend here because it softens up in in that area. So that's why anywhere I think that it will be nice to to, to blend off, I will blend it off. It just helps to, to create a more um, believable piece. Maybe here, I might try it there. And there's a lot here that I've missed out. But, you know, again, just a sketch, not getting too bothered. And then his nose area, I'm really going to soften because that has no form, really. But it's just shade all in that area. Strong, lovely shade. So you can see me going into that nose and that creates a lot of three dimension because I'm going to really darken that because it makes the nose really look like it's um, a kind of like real nose. It's not just a, a, an addition to the whole thing. Like, yeah. So here we go. I'm almost through, almost through, just softening things where I can and opening. Then I might come with my, my Poshka. A lot of you saw the one I did of Dick Gregory and I used a Poshka a lot there. So I might just come in with my Poshka. This Poshka is a white pen, a white um, uh, pen. It just helps with places where I couldn't get my eraser stuck into. So just um, ready for that. So here we go. And these are just some places where I might add it like just additions, just little additions here and there. It might not be as strong enough because um, it doesn't always perform as I want it to, but I do my best to add it anyway. Yeah, so by the side here, um, some of those stray lines that come out there, the top of his um, lip, there's a highlight there, which I like to add. So I'm gonna put that in with the Poshka. It's just easier to put it in with the Poshka I'm trying to take it out because I'm using graphite. If it was charcoal, some of them are softer. It's easy to take out. But with this, you know, you've got to work, work, work it a little bit more. Um, his, his lower lip is quite dark, which is unusual for most people because the, the lower lip is where you get the most light. So, but I'm just trying to just taper that to fit in to what I've got. Um... I'm going to use this on this side, just moving it across all through here. 
just carefully going almost to the end. Remember, this demo I'm doing, these are like lovely tasters for you. If you're thinking of joining the um, addictive sketches movement, just click on the link in my bio. And yes, this is the kind of things we'll be doing and more. You're going to have pre-recorded ones. You're going to have live ones like this where you can ask all questions. And there's so much we are going to uh, um, unravel. Okay, I'm just going for his, um, like uh, what they call his um, moustache now. Just a, a few areas around there. Just his moustache in the corner. Just bringing that out. Just little bits and pieces. I could go on. Remember, this is just a sketch. We're not going to worry ourselves too much with too much of the details and everything like that. But just to keep it alive and looking sketchy. And finally, I'm going to make some final marks. Maybe the air because it looks unrefined. So I'm going to darken some areas just to really bring that out. So I'm using the tip of the pencil this time to go into that. Just the tip of the pencil to really get in to those areas. Ah, I could take another, what, um, come on, 30 minutes or to an hour on this because there's so much to see and even go deeper, like inside his eyes is so dark, you know. You can hardly see his eye eyeballs. All those things are so particular about this particular man, you know. So very, very um, much, so much detail in there. I'm doing my best to make sure, you know, I can get some some sort of um, impression of him. Keep going. Um, around this area, I've always thought I left too much space here. I'm trying to reduce it. So just let's see what we can do. Um, I'm going to darken this area just a little bit more and then bring out his air on this side. So that curve will bring his air in. And I think there'll be less of space for that air and a darker background around it. A darker background around it. Yeah. A darker background around it. So let's keep going. Almost there. There's so much more to see in this guy. Um, you know, a lot of interest all around. His mouth is amazing. I'm just trying to hone on to some details to make it work in a way. Let's go to his bottom lip. I'm just gonna zoom in. There's a little bit of more interest around the bottom lip. You can see where it just joins into the top lip. Just some lovely details all over this. He has the these lovely details everywhere over. So much to see. A beautiful face always produces a beautiful sketch. Get the best get always get the best um always get the best faces like beg people bring them in say i love your face it will make a good drawing they feel flattered but it's true if you've got an amazing face why not you know go for it i do this a lot i stop people on the street i they think i've lost it but you've got a passion you've got to follow it through you know so that's what i do and I want to encourage you, anyway, I'll be encouraging all the addictive sketchers to do that. I want to see those who who really are in for it, you know. So this is towards the tail end now. Let's just get to the final bits. I'm going to soften the cheekbone around here. I'm going to soften all this area. Let's darken this. What are we for time? Oh, only four minutes. I, I promised to use only an hour for this. So here we go. Almost there. Darken, darken, darken. A little bit more dark. Yeah, and you can ask questions too as we go along. As I'm almost coming to the end. Any questions, please let me know. I know a lot of you have been asking questions throughout. But because I talk a lot when I do it, I think I explain most of what... Um, you might have wanted to ask just as I go along. Yeah. Again, there's one more day left for the addictive sketches movement. If you really want to up your game in sketching, this is it. We can make this work, right? 
So don't miss this opportunity. The flat price <laughs> remains the same only for tomorrow by midnight. Make sure you join in. I am coming to almost the end of this sketch. All right, you can see me put in the button and things like that. Don't worry, I'll post the sketch afterwards. Um, I'm just going to sign it now. Watch that. Roger that. <laughs> Someone even might want to add this to their collection. Who knows? Boom. That's it. I'm going to bring it close so you can see. So you can see how we went in that. That's about an hour we used for that one, you know. These are all the details. I'm just coming close on. There's more we could have done. Remember, it's only a sketch. And then you can be free. You can work this out. We could go on and on. You can see me still trying to sketch. But don't worry. This is it. Can you please save this session? Okay. No problem. I will. Thank you, um, Deborah. Thank you, um, Julia Johnson, and all of you that have stayed. Roshan, um, I'm seeing Nadia waved in. Thank you. A lot of you, I'm enjoying your presence. Thank you so much. Just love your art. So who says that? Um, Mrs. Babs Day. Yeah, oh, thank you. Um, Louis Rea. Oh, good old Louis. Nice to see you on. So we finished the, the demo. Um, any questions, please feel free to ask. Yes, Louis, I'm happy to see you on. I've just completed the demo. Um, who else? Uh, we've got so many people coming and joining. Thank you. Um, any last questions? It's one more minute. Alia says, amazing. Thank you. Susan Davis joined. Um, yeah, so this is um, one more minute. If you have any questions, just put it in the comments. Um, the demo is over. I might just soften some things, but you know, it's a sketch. I don't want to make it any, any more um, detailed than I've tried to do it in the sketch, just to show you how I'll go about that. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your... Thank you to your assistant. Yeah, Deborah. Oh, yeah, Josh. They're saying thank you to you. Yeah, he really helped because there's no way I could do it at the same time. Okay, so I am going to blow the whistle. Don't forget, join the Addictive Sketches movement. This is the kind of medicine you're going to be getting. <laughs> Game over. Six o'clock. Have a nice time. Bye. <laughs> okay, so live over, live over. What do you say? What do you do to end it? I don't even know how to end it. What do you do to end it? Okay. End.